A definite chief aim through definiteness of purpose. Two concepts that I learned from Napoleon Hill. A definite chief aim being a specific goal in which you are looking to achieve a outcome, a desired state externalized in reality, whatever way you want to look at it, it is being of purpose, using your mind towards a specific outcome. The goal of the definite chief aim is to bring forth what you desire from the perspective of spirit of harmony. This is done with definiteness of purpose. What I've done is I've taken a handful of quotes from Neville and Napoleon, and we're going to discuss this concept of combining definite chief aim through the definiteness of purpose. Napoleon Hill says, any definite chief aim that is deliberately fixed in the mind and held there with the determination to realize it finally saturates the entire subconscious mind until it automatically influences the physical action of the body towards the attainment of that purpose. Now we have in our life multiple areas that we are interested in creating or evolving. And to understand this, we refer to this Zig Ziglar's Wheel of Life, seven different areas, career, financial, spiritual, physical, intellectual, family, and social. Now, what you're looking to achieve might be in one of these categories. And so you create a definite chief aim based on that category. Usually, it's in the realm of financial or relationships or something, but it could be any one of these. Now, definiteness of purpose, in my opinion, is taking all these areas and linking it over to your definite chief aim. That means that you see career, financial, spiritual, physical, intellectual, family, and social as contributing factors to your definite chief aim. And you see your definite chief aim as contributing factors to all of these. Now, what we're going to do in this video is weave them all together. As a result of weaving these all together, we experience something called unwavering focus. So I wrote this quote here. The way to fix a definite chief aim in your mind is to link it to multiple areas of your life that are important to you. This cultivates unwavering focus. About a month or so ago, I released a video called Unwavering Focus, and I recommend you watch it. The idea behind it is that many of us, when we create goals, when we have something that we want to see brought forth, we do it from a place of force, what Neville calls the world of Caesar, physical or emotional force to try to manipulate the outer world into externalizing what we desire. Now, while you can create that, it's important to remember that there's side effects because we live in a world of causality, cause within effect in the outer world and cause in the outer world and effects for those causes in the outer world. If you use physical force in the outer world to get your way, then the outer world in some shape or form will also reciprocate that back at a later point through physical force. So thus we work with the powers of mind. Through working with the powers of mind, we uncover unique and creative ways of bringing forth what we desire through the concept of infinite intelligence, hunches and inspirations received via our intuition, and also optimal behaviors, actions, thoughts, and emotions that we move forward with, inspired action, to create what we desire from the perspective of spirit of harmony, benefit for us, benefit for those that we participate with, and benefit for divine, otherwise known as the mastermind. Mastermind is two or more individuals coming together and working together in the spirit of harmony towards a specific worthwhile objective, a definite chief aim. It may be a similar definite chief aim, or each person might have their own definite chief aim, and through the collaboration of the minds, unique perspectives, insights, hunches, and inspirations are gathered for the individuals and the collective to bring forth what the collective wants. That's called the spirit of harmony. None of this involves any type of force. What it does involve is evolution of self, realization of self, the understanding that what stands between you and the desired outcome is past programming that you assume to be true, 
that is in your subconscious mind that externalizes as the bridge of incidents that reveal to you about yourself and what we're interested in as far as evolution is what we react to. Now, what we react to is otherwise known as the world of Caesar. So let's go into what Neville mentions here. He says, to be transformed, the whole basis of your thoughts must change. But your thoughts cannot change unless you have new ideas, for you think from your ideas. All transformation begins with an intense burning desire to be transformed. The first step in the renewing of the mind is desire. You must first want to be different and intend to be before you can begin to change yourself. So renewing your mind is done by seeing into completion one thing at a time to uncover reactivity to the world of Caesar. The, two, the world of Caesar being five sensory data that causes you to recreate elements from your past from some of these perspectives here. Pessimism, irritation, doubt, worry, blame, shame, anger, jealousy, and insecurity. Any of these emotions that cause you to reorient yourself into a perspective, what we call lack of focus, or identifying with something that is not in correlation and not in harmony with what you want to create. As a result of reacting to these elements, you'll find yourself moving in a direction of these elements, moving off course. So in order to stay on course, we have to remember that we live in multiple dimensions of reality. We have our career, our financial peace, our spiritual, our social, our family, intellectual, physical. We have 24 hours in a day and we live in reality doing different things, having different actions, thoughts, and emotions all throughout the day, navigating different environments, circumstances, interacting with different people. And all of these experiences can be interpreted as contributing towards our definite chief aim or any of these emotions experience as reactivity from the world of Caesar. Now, we live in this existence where in this existence, these emotions exist. And these emotions are usually assimilated from past experiences. Through learning and certain circumstances, we begin to form an identity with these types of emotions. The truth is that this identity, the current self, is not from the perspective of the higher self where these emotions do not exist. When a person identifies their higher self through bringing forth a definite chief aim, they also uncover different elements in existence that cause them to become reactive in which they identify and change the meaning within through the various subconscious mind modalities, which I shared in my last video, I'll put a link in the description, to evolve the programming within so we respond rather than react. We no longer have these emotions that are listed here. What instead do we have? Well, we have then a faith towards the outcome. We have a optimism or a perspective of everything in our existence contributing. Obstacles are then changed as far as perspective goes within and looked at as opportunities. If it's a business that you desire to create and you have certain elements that show up on the bridge of incidents that lead to identifying with the world of Caesar in any shape or form, you might not see them as opportunities because you'll be reactive to it and assume what that reactivity means, which is really a story based on the past. Many of us live from the perspective of recreating our past again and again and again. And the saying goes, everywhere you go, there you are. So when you create a definite chief aim, you're bringing that version of yourself, the current self, over to you on the bridge of incidents towards realizing the definite chief aim. But the goal to remember is that when you identify the different elements that you are reactive to, you can change the meaning within to be more in alignment with the higher self, which is encouraging and propelling you forward towards your definite chief aim. And as a result of that, you not only are able to bring forth what you desire from a place of joy, bliss, and ease, but you're also able to identify and internalize your higher self. The higher self becomes the current self. 
And this process repeats over and over again. When you create new definite chief aims, you're able to bring it forth with ease. This is why when you create a goal and you see it all the way till completion using this process, you acquire wisdom, understanding, and perspective on realities that you would not have seen before or experienced before. Your entire perspective on reality might change radically as a result of becoming or externalizing that state within your mind that you vision in your imagination. You become, in essence, a different person. But this different person is more in alignment with your higher self. So you're really, in essence, releasing false elements about yourself that you have identified with from your past to receive your higher self and externalize it as what you call the version of reality that you want to see, which is part of the higher self, which we can also call heaven on earth. Napoleon Hill says, until a man selects a definite purpose in life, he dissipates his energies and spreads his thoughts over so many subjects and in so many different directions that they lead not to power, but to indecision and weakness. So there's a reason why we create a definite chief aim. It's not just bringing forth something that you desire. It's a spiritual commitment. It's a commitment to receive your higher self, to live your higher self. And the reason why we say this is because one of my concepts that I talk about a lot is flow. Flow is where challenge meets skill. But flow is a feeling. It is in alignment with intuition. It is where we use our intelligence plus the creative intelligence and other elements that we learn along the journey to bring forth what we desire and experience what we call bliss. Bliss is a experience that we have that is partially facilitated by a neurotransmitter called anandamide. Anandamide is released and binds to THC receptors in the brain. And what is found is that it is released when a person is in flow. So by being in flow, you release this neurotransmitter, which by the way, we're just talking it from a physical standpoint. There's the emotional, mental, and spiritual standpoint. And from the physical standpoint, you experience this sensation called bliss. So thus, the pathway to spiritually receiving your higher self and living your higher self is supported by your physical being. Now, your definite chief aim, as Napoleon Hill says, in life should be selected with deliberate care. So when we're reflecting about what we're saying here, it's important to look at these areas that we refer to on the Zig Ziglar's Wheel of Life and ask yourself, how can you relate all these areas to your definite chief aim? And I'm gonna give you a, a definition of how I look at it and how I create it, and perhaps you can benefit from it. The reason is, since we are bringing forth our definite chief aim from the perspective of realizing our higher self, we're also going to understand that there's other areas of life that are important to us. I always mention that my story in the early stages was to just get out of $50,000 debt, just make money. And in the process of realizing the definite chief aim and achieving mastery in that area, I realized that there was other areas of my life that I needed fulfillment on. And this realization of these other areas that were important to me came as a result of what I call receiving my higher self which is uncovering these other aspects in my life that I wanted to experience fulfillment in. And as a result of then creating new definite chief aims that became more holistic in nature that included these other areas, I then realized that I can then value these other areas and not see them as conflicting to my definite chief aim, but rather supporting and contributing to my definite chief aim, thus also cultivating those areas. So the definite chief aim maybe one thing specific, but it also contributes to all areas of your life. And as a result of doing this, you also receive different hunches and inspirations from your higher self, which then replaces the current self in the, you could say, paradigm or the identity. Now, when we think about identity for a moment, let's reflect upon this. And I've discussed this in a handful of videos. Anything that we say I am to we assume to be that person. The truth is we are transcendent to what we say I am too. Whoever you say you are, whether you give your title as 
entrepreneur or a certain professional or you are this person or that person is really a construct that you have assimilated in your mind based on past experiences and certain five sensory data and meaning assigned to create this conceptual model of who you are. Now, you might be happy with who you are or you might not be happy with who you are, but who you are within is a conceptual model primarily buried in the subconscious mind. This conceptual model is what we call the paradigm or the current self or the identity or the self-image. The goal in life is to bring this self-image into alignment with your true self, otherwise known as the higher self. And many different philosophies and spiritual traditions and different kinds of experiences and knowledge, body of knowledge, let's say, that's available in the personal development space, all point to the same direction, that there's this higher version of you, and what you want to do is be this higher version. So you're not looking to be like somebody else. You might be inspired by others. What you're really looking to do is receive your higher self within and be your higher self and express that because contained within that identity of your higher self is everything that you want in all these areas of life, career, financial, spiritual, physical, social, family, and intellectual. And what we can do is we can weave it together as part of our definite chief aim. And this creates this sensation called definiteness of purpose. Because when you have definiteness of purpose, you wake up each day and you know exactly what you need to do. And this is an ongoing journey. You'll get clearer as you take action. You'll get clearer as you reflect upon how the other areas are contributing to your definite chief aim. But you wake up with a sense of purpose, knowing that you're contributing to all these areas of your life. Now, it doesn't mean you divide the entire day up into slices where you devote time and energy into each of these areas. That will be determined by your inner voice. You'll know because it's not about quantity of time. It's quality of time. It's not about the magnitude that you do. It's about the right amount that is right for you, which is received on the journey towards creating your definite chief aim. Your definite chief aim is, as mentioned earlier, a spiritual commitment. It's designed to evolve you and receive certain elements within you to help you have realizations about life in each of these areas that will be true to you, that you will honor, which you will then learn to trust yourself. So one of the things that happens on the journey of realizing your definite chief aim is self-esteem, self-love, self-appreciation, self-confidence increases. Why? because you trust your inner voice. You don't allow the noise of other people's opinions. You may listen to it, you may acknowledge it, and if it resonates with you, you might integrate it, but you don't let those opinions drown out your own inner voice. Because you know that you are being well-rounded with your life, and you also know you're moving towards a purpose, to realize that purpose, to evolve within and receive your higher self and internalize your higher self, and also contribute to these other areas of life that are important to you. Neville says the desire which realizes itself is always a desire upon which attention is exclusively concentrated. For the idea is endowed with power only in proportion to the degree of attention fixed on it. Concentrated observation is the attentive attitude directed from some specific end. The attentive attitude involves selection, for when you pay attention, it signifies that you have decided to focus your attention on one object or state rather than on another. Now, when you realize that everything is contributing to your definite chief aim, and these areas of your life are contributing to your definite chief aim, and your definite chief aim is contributing to these areas, you see all of them as one. You don't see them as separate. When you navigate, you value each moment in your life, each moment invested in each of these areas, is valuable and contributing to your definite chief aim. How so? Let's look at this. Say your definite chief aim was to achieve a certain financial goal. Well, in the career part, perhaps the capabilities that you develop contribute towards your definite chief aim of a certain financial goal. And this career is being in service to others. So the career is not just rewarding as far as financial but it's rewarding in the service to others and the contributions you make over in this external world to others to enjoy. And also you will find that perhaps in your career at a certain point, 
you will observe a mentorship role, a leadership role, where you'll lead others into the level of success that they desire in that particular career. And that can be very fulfilling. So career then, we segmented and separated from financial because career can have meaning as far as contribution, joy, happiness, bliss, stimulation of the mind, which ties into intellectual. And it will result in financial because what you put out, law of correspondence, come back to you. And when you multiply your quantity of service, quality of service, and spirit of service, it's going to contribute to your financial goals because what you put out comes back to you. But it's the spirit of service that we're talking about in career. The desire to cultivate the skills, the desire to help others also cultivate their skills in leadership positions and so forth. That's a contributing factor towards the financial goal. Social is also a contributing factor to the financial goal. The people that you associate with the kind of relationships that you have and the interactions uplift you, inspire you, and contribute and also reveal aspects about you. If it's reactive elements that are being received in the experiences you have in social, you can also reflect upon it and evolve the programming within. And by evolving yourself from reactivity to the five sensory data-based elements in the world of Caesar, you then gain greater insights to be more from a place of responsiveness which also contributes to your financial goals. And perhaps the social environment or the social circle and people that you choose to associate with also advise you and bring you certain relationships into certain environments that can educate you or further your financial goal. Now, the same is to be said with family. One of the greatest issues that we might experience in life is an inharmonious relationship with our family. And upon evolving this relationship with our family within, Realizing that we are born with our family and will never be able to change our family, really. But being in peace and harmony within with our family contributes to our financial goal by releasing certain kinds of gray zone thought processes that we have in our mind and redirects it over to our financial goal. And in the process, we also build a relationship with our family. Intellectual. By figuring out how to serve your clients better to create different products and services that are needed and useful, to invest and grow what you receive in a way that benefits you, benefits others, benefits divine and ev evolution, you are also developing intelligence, the intelligence to understand how you can create money for yourself is probably one of the most complex skills that you can have. It's actually, if you really think about it, a really challenging skill until you learn the dynamics of how it is so. The ability to go up to somebody, identify what value is for them, create the product or service that is needed and useful to them, to the point where they take out their credit card or give you money for it, is a very valuable skill. If you have that skill, you have a certain degree of intellectual understanding of how relationships work, of how finances work and how business works, which can be really valuable for you and contributes to your intellectual growth. The same is with physical. By taking care of your health, by being physically able to handle certain kinds of situations that may be experienced as stressful, by choosing to honor your well-being by perhaps picking foods that are in alignment with making you feel better, that is also going to contribute to your financial goal because you will be able to remain more so in a flow state. Perhaps there are certain activities that you do that diminish your physical well-being, that cause you to get stressed out and reactive to the world of Caesar, and as a result will lead to not being able to move forward as well as you'd like towards your financial goals. And spiritual. See, the definite chief aim to me is a spiritual commitment. In the process of bringing forth your definite chief aim, you are contributing to all areas of your life and you're also understanding your true self, your higher self. You also get a deeper level of understanding of the concept of infinite intelligence because you start to see it play out more so in your life. And that's a very spiritual element that can only be understood upon deep reflection and meditation. Deep reflection and meditation happens on the journey towards realizing your definite chief aim. Because at any point in your definite chief aim journey, there's going to be moments where you will need to reflect upon what you react to. 
And upon reflecting on what you react to, you engage in something called self-talk. Who you're really talking with, who you're speaking with is your higher self, who advises you, who gives you information, insights, and perspectives. This is called building a relationship with yourself, being your own best friend. And this is a very spiritual thing to do. And through this process, you understand the dynamics of the world within, otherwise known as the sixth sense. This is also the way we build a relationship with our inner voice, our intuition, which is a spiritual concept, which brings us even more insights and perspectives and unique creative ways to bring forth what we desire and even new desires that unravel even more aspects of our higher self. So the definite chief aim is there so that when we create it, we can enjoy the results and it's also there so we can evolve in the journey. Now, let's look at this from an application standpoint. So what I've done is I've taken some information that I pulled from one of Napoleon Hill's programs and put it into this little text on the screen. What we're going to do is we're going to weave it all together, everything that we've discussed, linking all these elements, important areas of our life, to our definite chief aim. So the definite chief aim I've created here is one that I have received for many of you, and it's the desire to create a certain amount of money. So I've picked... $120,000. So we're going to create this and you can replace this whatever you'd like. So here's the affirmative statement. O divine providence, I ask not for more riches, but for wisdom with which to make wiser use of the riches you gave me at birth, consisting in the power to control and direct my own mind to whatever ends I might desire. And thus by January 2021, I will have within my possession $120,000 which will come to me in various amounts from time to time during the interim. In return for this money, I will give the most efficient service of which I am capable, rendering the fullest possible quantity and the best possible quality of service in the capacity of being an entrepreneur. I, be I believe that I will have this money in my possession. My faith is so strong that I can now see this money before my eyes. I can touch it with my hands. It is now awaiting transfer to me at the time and in the proportion that I deliver the service I intend to render in return for it. I am awaiting a plan by which to accumulate this money, and I will follow this plan when it is received. It will enhance my career and my ability to serve others. Through the process of enhancing my career, I will attract those that I will mentor and guide so they too can pass on the torch of the wisdom and understanding that I receive and contribute to the body of knowledge of my career. In the process, I will choose to associate with individuals who are in the spirit of harmony. They will make up my social circle. They will be my mastermind. I will serve them as they serve me. We will have joy, bliss, and ease in our interactions, which will rejuvenate me, uplift my spirits, to allow me to be more in service. I realize by being more in service, I will have more hunches, inspirations, and ideas on how to create the $120,000. Through this process, I will also develop a deeper relationship with my family. I realize that my family is a contributing factor towards the realization of my goal. I do this by helping them with their goals. I identify their needs, their desires, and support them. I realize that through the law of correspondence, what I put out comes back to me. Through this process, I also develop a deeper understanding of how reality works, the powers of the mind, and the ability to weave everything together to be harmonious and related towards my definite chief aim. Through the process, I develop unwavering focus. I understand how to direct my mind towards a specific outcome, and I'm able to create what I desire again and again and again. I also develop specialized knowledge, capabilities, skills, understanding of the various elements that are required to enhance my career, to enhance my relationships with my friends, to enhance the relationship with my family and create the financial success that I want. Through this process, I build a relationship with my higher self. I begin to communicate with my higher self. This is done through my inner voice. Through my inner voice, I receive guidance on social areas of my life, family elements that show up, intellectual pieces that I need to uncover. I attract to people, environment, and circumstance because I realize the synchronicities that appear by staying focused on my definite chief aim which is a impression on my subconscious mind to externalize as different elements that I receive to further increase my intellect. Through this journey, I also operate from a place of flow. 
By maintaining flow, I realize the importance of taking care of my health. I value the food that I put into my body. I value how I take care of my body. And I realize that this uplifts my spirits, energizes me, and brings me into a higher emotional state. As a result of being this way, I will be a better friend. I will be a better family member. I will move forward in my career and lead others in the space of my endeavor from a place of joy and passion, spirit of service, quantity of service, and quality of service. Through this process, I uncover even deeper intellectual capability because I realize that a physical body translates into a greater capacity and capability to use my brain and mind to direct it towards the outcome of my definite chief aim. So by having a process like this and affirming these kind of statements, and feel free to take what I'm sharing with you, which I just created, because what I do is whenever I create a definite chief aim, I do the same process. And then all throughout the day, I reflect with everything I do in all these areas, how I can improve in those areas, because I have created the affirmation that improvement and contribution in those areas also contribute to my definite chief aim. And as the saying goes, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. So what we're saying is this is how we want to believe it's done unto us from a holistic perspective, and thus it'll be done unto us in a holistic perspective. So this is how you link a definite chief aim and create definiteness of purpose. Definiteness of purpose is done by linking all areas of your life that are important to you to your definite chief aim and linking your definite chief aim to all the areas of your life that are important to you. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.